welcome to the MBS Show. I am your host Norman Sanzo, and if this seems off the clock than the new than the normal schedule, well, this is because this is a special because, well, how do I put this? It has to do with my good friend Daniel Anthony. Hello. So you wanted to be on the show this week, but because of scheduling for pa, you didn't. But hey, um, you told me that this was kind of time sensitive and said, why not we do this, right? Oh, you suggested, so I would gladly accept that with you. And I'm gladly, you know, happy that the MBS show is willing to do an episode right in this middle of the week season just for me. And uh, it's, yeah, it is a bit of a timing constraint, not completely, you know, time bomb level urgent, but it's still, you know, to do with getting this message out by the end of the month. All right, you know, all right. You know. I mean, I can understand because time sensitive um, material or time sensitive, whatever they call it, is time wibbly sensitive. wobbly timey wimey stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, um, I'm looking here at the docs, and uh, how do I put this? It, it, it's a bit funny because, haha, I saw this on April Fools <laughs> because, um, the NBA show also did their April Fools joke. Um, it's just not that obvious because, um, I messed up with the timing and whatnot, but. Um, I'm sure that this is no joke, right? Come on, like, you're not gonna do this whole special just to prank me, bro, right? Yeah, April Fool's is long over and I'm, I'm not here to prank anyone. Uh, okay. You know, it's... I All the jokes that came out April Fool's Day were great. Everyone did a great job. Really? In, uh, you know, I didn't saw anything. Really, really cute things. Um, EQD had a really cute uh, oh, yeah. joke. And um, if I'm not mistaken, we saw some good jokes from conventions around, such as... Uh, Rue Bronicon, are you Bronicon? They announced that they had to unfortunately ban all equine species from their convention. <laughs> it was a very unfortunate incident. Uh, okay. So, uh, if people at home don't know, the Siponicon convention, uh, they did their joke and it's similar to EQD and that is the Sipony coins. Yes, it's a, it is a cryptocurrency thing but you see i won't use the word joke here because unlike most other groups like uh there was one called Lowe's coin there was one called uh, the, the pwn coin by eqd mm-hmm. well, all of these are fictitious but the one thing that differs in project c pony cons little april fool's campaign is that we actually created this coin <laughs> wait, wait, wait you're you're telling me that c pony coins are real well in the terms of it's not fictitious uh, no, it's not. It's actually really created. It exists on the blockchain and they are actively tradable. <laughs> oh, okay. Um, why? We'll start off with this, you know, like some people came up to me and asked me, I haven't heard from Project C PonyCon in eight months aside from the occasional tweet or Facebook posting. And all that you got was this silly little April Fool's thingy and what, what gives? So... I'll start off by saying that you know it's no it's no secret we're a convention that is kind of strapped for cash. After 2017, when we held Project C PonyCon in Bangkok, Thailand, unfortunately we were you know we 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 did we did have an event and we do consider it a successful event. And but the thing is that when we did this, we were focused and we said by hook or by crook, by any means necessary, this event must go on. There is no cancelling, no pulling plugs. People from all over Southeast Asia and beyond. We had guests from USA, from Europe, from Dubai, from all over Southeast Asia, even from Australia. And because of that, we said we could not let any of these people down by, you know, just canceling and pulling out an event right before it happens. Therefore, we held the event. And unfortunately, we also, we kind of fell short on our estimate on how many attendees would be there. Therefore, we actually had to take out a couple of loans and right now we are still repaying these. So therefore, any news about any future conventions is on hold. But that's not what today is about. It's just, we're just bringing you up to speed on where we are. But today, what I'm talking about, and if everything to do with this coin, this has nothing to do with us trying to level our debts or anything. <laughs> all right, all right. So what you're saying is that this coin here is to, quote-unquote, help fund the con? Uh, not at all, actually. No, it's, in fact, uh, the reason why we created it was it, it is a novelty. It is a little souvenir. It's a little digital souvenir that you can buy. The reason I, well, I, I'm coming onto the show to talk about this is just to tell people that, hey, it's actually real. You can, for, for the lack of a better word, quote, unquote, play with it. You can go around, you can trade it and do silly things with it. It's just that it's, um, it's not a, it's not completely fictitious. We just wanted to put that and make that kind of clear that it's not a, it's not a work of fiction. 
All right, all right, all right. So I'm seeing here on the documentation that you sent me, ICO. What's that? I, I'll try to make this as simple as I can. And ICO stands for Initial Coin Offering. And this is something that is done in a lot of cryptocurrencies when people launch a new coin or a new token or a new whatever they call it. They will do an ICO. It's something like how companies do an IPO for their shares when they launch it, on, when they want to get listed on a, on, a, on a stock exchange or a market. But in this case where it's just basically like Project Seaponicon announcing, hey, we've created a coin and now this is the first time it's available to the public. Uh, we announced that on the 1st of April and we declare the sale of tokens open for a whole month. So it's, it's, it's just a very simple term. It's nothing too technical. Nothing, it's just saying that, hey, it's for sale. That's about it. Okay, so why April Fool's Day or Easter? Like, could you believe it? It's Easter falls on the same day as uh, April Fool's. Like, I was so confused. Yeah, in in fact, uh, a lot of actually nobody that I know outside of the team has found the Easter egg we hidden on the <laughs> our ICO website. There is an Easter egg on that website. You know, it's it's very hard to find. I'll say it, but um, no one has said anything about it just yet. So I'm still waiting for somebody to go and dig it up. Uh, why on April Fool's Day is that? Yeah, I um, again, it's just to tell. It, it was meant to be. Not really a joke, not really something serious. We wanted to get somewhere in between. So we created it as what we call a novelty. And it's just meant to be a fun thing. But rather than make it a complete joke and a waste of everyone's time, it's just something that you can hold, hold in your wallet. See, it doesn't take up any space. It doesn't take up any uh, resources just to hold it in your wallet, in an Ethereum wallet. And... It's completely. It's not completely free, I would say. There are some costs uh, associated with having to purchase a token and uh, being able to do the transaction on the network. But everything else is just a way of just having something fun that we created in your virtual wallet. Hmm, okay, okay. So basically, you're just mining the Sipony coins to get more loot then, right? Actually, here's where there's a big difference. Um, yes, I know mining has a lot of similarities with cryptocurrency but in this case the pony coin cannot be mined mm -hmm. the reason is because it is not on its own uh, system or chain see um to explain this i'll just make it very brief uh how this works is that in 2009 the first cryptocurrency which was bitcoin became big it, it was uh it was the bitcoin system is basically this there is a big master ledger like where people in input and uh, write down all their transactions and uh, how bitcoin does it is just by recording everybody's transactions that's why all you need to do is just hold your account rather than actually hold anything physical because everything that it belongs to you is on the bitcoin what they call blockchain or ledger and just a few years ago a new system came out called ethereum and in ethereum the creators thought about hey why can't why don't we put other things on this ledger instead it doesn't have to be just money it can be other um, assets and things so therefore this token system was born and that's why you can see anyone can any it became democratic anyone could put a token on this system so there are a lot of quote unquote that's not a word coins out in the market that are completely useless and um, some of them are dead some of them nobody manages anymore and um, you know we, we won't be surprised if one day Seaponicon ends up in this bunch but again it's not meant to hold any value in the first place so it became a very big open space for anyone to create their own currency and trade it. So that's exactly what we did. So why are you doing this? That's the crux of the matter. <laughs> why the hell I'm here in the first place? Mm -hmm. You see, we wanted to use crypt uh, cryptocurrency and blockchains to help us in organizing the convention. In fact, wherever we could, we actually accepted Bitcoin. Um, we couldn't do it on our ticket page or our crowdfunding, because first of all, Indiegogo does not accept. Actually, Indiegogo, if I'm not mistaken, does accept, but uh, they don't They do not do it anymore. Um, our ticket system, Evanzilla, did not accept cryptocurrency. So because of that, uh, we could accept it only in one place, and that was for our vendors who wanted to, uh, if our vendors wanted to have a booth, then yes, they could pay us in Bitcoin, in fact. But because this technology is still difficult to integrate in many systems, uh, we had to resort to just using the traditional services, PayPal, bank accounts, ATM cards, debit cards, you know, th that, that kind of stuff. And one, what really got us um, quite worked up is that we were 
we were a small team. We are still a very small team. And all of these services that we had to use, uh, you know, it comes with protocol. Protocol comes with paperwork. Paperwork costs money. We had to do paperwork, which takes up our precious time, which we usually spend, which we could otherwise spend working on the convention itself. We had to go to the bank in the morning, get papers signed, uh, do bank accounts in Thailand, in Malaysia, and all over the place. Just had to have so many accounts, cards, and documents and papers to keep track of. It was getting quite sickening. And if we had a way to transmit money much better, I mean, the, the way that the blockchain works is that it's, it made the transmission of funds so efficient that you know we could have saved so much in just in terms of exchange fees commission see we dealt with seven different currencies in southeast asia including aussie dollars and us dollars and even brunei dollars thanks to one of our attendees we actually ended up losing almost a thousand us dollars just paying bank fees exchange fees cash out fees and all these and these exchange commissions a thousand dollars just swallowed up by all that alone mm, that, that sucks <clears throat> and i could just imagine if uh, you guys had some bitcoins to start off with. It wouldn't be that painful. It's not so much that. It's it's every, the whole uh, ecosystem has to adopt it as well. People have got to pay in the coin. People have got to receive coin, and uh, we couldn't pay our venue in coin. We couldn't pay our uh, we couldn't pay for our fees in coins. We couldn't pay Michelle Krieber in coins. I don't think she takes it. So therefore, we you know it's. It's a very distant fantasy and a very distant dream that we had that, hey, if, we, if this could work, the world would be a better place. Unfortunately, it doesn't. All right, all right, all right. So I'm a bit confused with the whole thing because um, I initially thought that Siponi coins are too fun for the con. They're not? The way this works is that in the ICO that we're doing, the exchange rate is 1 Ether is to 10,000 C. So if you send, uh, it, it works on an automatic smart contract, meaning... If you send uh, any Ethereum currency, which is Ether, to that co to that contract, it will automatically send you back what is the equivalent in C Pony Coin. And of course, when you send Ether, Ether is the main currency of the Ethereum blockchain. Again, it's only for Ether. You can't send us any other token; it won't work. The deal is that we will receive some money, and that would be used to offset the debts of the con. But we're not doing this to raise a million dollars. Don't get us wrong you know we're not here to raise a thousand a million dollars through this in fact you buy one coin and based on today's exchange rate that is six and a half us cents for <laughs> one c pony coin that is a really tiny amount in fact in the world of cryptocurrency that is actually quite high in terms of a coin but the thing is we're not selling this because we hope that one day it will be worth a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars that's not going to happen if you're if you're thinking about buying in the hopes that this coin will one day make you rich no it won't i'm sorry <laughs> All righty then, all righty then. You, you ain't no Bitcoin then, all right? So if I'm understanding... No, it's not, it's not. Yeah. So if I'm understanding right, um, from uh, one Ether is equivalent to 10,000 Sipony coins, is it? Yes, correct. All right. So uh, the goal is like, okay, if I were to... Let's just say I'm interested. I'll just have to give you one Ether and I'll get 10k um, Sipony coins. Correct. And in all honesty, um, that Sipony coin does nothing really, right? Again, it's uh, think of it this way. Sipon, it's a virtual asset. And the way that these blockchains do is that it, you can prove that you're the owner of it if you control the private key or in a very crude translation, if you control the password of a wallet. And because Ethereum wallets are fully transparent, anyone can see inside. So you can say, hey, I have some Sipony coin and from this con, it's, such, it's a cool little coin that they made. And everyone can see that. It's just, it's, again, it's a fun project just for, just for just, think of it as a little keychain for a wallet that is completely virtual. Alrighty then, alrighty then. So what if my country's law prevent me from participating in an ICO? Ooh. That, is a, that is a big problem in the world because there are some countries like China, USA, and even our neighbor Singapore doesn't let, they don't let their citizens participate in ICOs because of various reasons. Every country has their own uh, axe to grind with the cryptocurrency world. And if that's the case and you still want to participate, first of all, friendship is magic. Ask a friend to buy it for you. But if, if not, then uh, the other way is that you can actually get it from some exchanges where we've also listed, not listed, we've just put the coin in the exchange and you can access it through some links that I, I'll give and put in the show notes after this. 
you when you click on these links, you'll be taken to either Ether Delta or Token Store, where you can actually trade this token on the exchange. The the price will be slightly different from the ICO, and uh, these actually the the difference is that this actually applies to anyone who may be listening to this episode a little too late. See, uh, an ICO can only run for a certain amount of time, and in this case, the ICO will end on the 30th of April. Again, why we really needed to do this episode in time. The reason is that price that I told you about, where one ether equals to 10,000 C, that price will no longer be valid after the end of the month because the way this works is that the program that is dealing the C Pony coin will only deal how much coin is bought. After this month, there will be never there will never be any more creation of C Pony coin. So uh, there are currently about three thousand five hundred C Pony coin in existence. I, I'll check that out. But after this month, let's just say nobody else buys nobody buys any more from the original ICO contract. There will never be any more C Pony coin made after these three thousand six hundred and five C Pony coin that is currently in existence. All right, you know, so it's kind of an exclusive item then. All right, all right. Pretty much. That's how. That's that's kind of what adds to its so-called value and also what makes it a novelty. <laughs> so you see, like, you, I bought it when it was on sale. That kind of thing happens. All right. So there's no way that more C Pony coins could be entered into circulation. No. No. After thirtieth of April, that would be the end of the, what we call the minting or creation of C Pony coin and. After 30th of April, when that timer on our website at ico.cponycon.com ticks out, there will be no no more creation of Cpony coin. Okay, uh, so what you're telling me is that uh, for the whole month of April, your uh, the whatever website that you mentioned just now just keeps printing those coins for every person who buys it for one ether. Yes. So and you're telling That's, me um, you don't you don't have to use one ether. Uh, because ether is expensive. Ether is six hundred dollars to one ether, so Oof. you can buy for anything in a sub amount. Ether has eighteen decimal places. Uh, all right, all right. So basically, what you're telling me is that there's already three thousand six hundred something people that bought it. Uh, no, no, no. I mean, you don't have to buy one coin at one go. If you send us, let's just say, if somebody sends us two ether, the contract will the the program will send back. Uh, twenty thousand C pony coin. If you send me half an ether, it sends you five thousand C pony coin. So, not me, sorry, the 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 program. <laughs> Don't send money to me. I I I am not gonna send you. I I can send I can send you back the right amount, but that'll take longer. All right, all right, all right. So let me see. Um, now, what can I do with C pony coin thingies? Like um, like you mentioned before, it's some. Thing like a keychain like that like it's nothing it's yes it's it's, it's what do we call an erc20 token uh, erc20 is a protocol for tokens um if you if you're more interested look it up but it, that's a highly technical thing uh, just saying that it con it conforms to the erc20 standard meaning that it can be traded on the network just like any other token that exists there there are many other tokens like 10x like omisego there's uh uh I don't know. There are there are over eight thousand tokens in existence, and I think that number has tripled since I said it. So, this token is freely tradable. You can send it to people, maybe as a gift or anything. It's it doesn't. You, you can choose to hold on to it, or you can choose to give it away. It's up to you. And in fact, just like anything in the world, willing seller, willing buyer. If somebody tells you, "Hey, I like. That. Hey, I noticed you have some C pony. I'm going to give you three thousand bucks for it." And well, that's up to you. Okay, okay, okay. So it's like Magic the Gathering. Then it's a piece of paper that everybody wants. Even less than that, it's completely virtual. <laughs> right. It's completely virtual. All righty then, all righty then. So, what happens to the ether I send or use to buy the Sipony coins? Uh, again, as I mentioned earlier, it just it will it will come to us at the convention at Project Sipony Con, and we will take that money. We will cash it out into fiat currency, which is. Uh, in this case, Malaysian ringgit, and it will go towards paying off the last of the debts for the convention. We are about eh, coming up to halfway through paying everything off, so we're not here to you know just solicit donations and say, hey, you must buy this, you should buy this. It's just if you want to be a part of our silliness and maybe just take home a little souvenir for it, or if you actively trade Ethereum or you're always you know checking the Ethereum network for new innovations and stuff, or even if you're just a blockchain enthusiast, that's you know this is a project that you can be in on as well and just have to have a bit of fun. It's six and a half cents, you know. 
Mm-hmm. Wait, uh, one ether is six and a half cents or what? No, one one C pony coin is six and a half cents. Uh, one ether is about six hundred and fifty dollars, I think. Ah, all right, then. Mm-hmm. So, um, most obvious question here is: Are you going to have another convention? I was hoping you wouldn't ask, but um, we want to. We definitely want to. And uh, I know I keep stalling this and I keep saying that I kept telling people that we only talk about it after the con. And then now I say that, you know, we can't talk about it yet. People have messaged us a lot about this. And I say, we want to. We can't at the moment. We're really, really sorry. But, you know, you keep tabs on our Instagram or Facebook, our Twitter. Just use the C Pony Con handle. And you'll find us there. We post silly things once in a while but if we have a convention announcement you bet we're gonna make it pretty loud you're gonna see it on eqd we're gonna post it up on uh, some of the local groups in southeast asia and we will definitely update our social media on it awesome 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 and i think that's about it for me because i don't really know about the coins like uh i, I ain't no expert yo so yeah I, no nobody is coins are coins are a whole new world on their own it's uh Something I've taken a personal keen interest in because of, again, how I realized that this technology could do so much to help the convention that I built. But the problem is not enough people are using it in order to get it to, in order to make it feasible. So you see, what we say is that if C Pony Coin could become a big deal and everyone starts using it and it becomes viable, then hooray, that's perfect. That's, that's our dream come true. But we, we are, that is really wishful thinking. We can't, we can't demand that from our attendees. We can't demand that from the community. Therefore, we reimagined it and said, hey, let's just do this for fun instead and just make it a little simple symbol of our aspirations. All right, yeah, all right, you're done. So did I left anything out, man? Like, Well, yeah, our website is... Uh, the main convention website is still cponycon.com. If you want to get to the to see our ICO and also to reveal the contract where you should send your tokens if you want to participate, it's ico.cponycon.com. I've made a lot of mistakes by typing ico.cponycoin.com. No, that website doesn't exist. It's ico.cponycon.com. <laughs> All right, and uh, we are trading on Ether Delta and Token Store. Uh, I'll send the links to Norman. He'll put it in the show notes after this. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And lastly, also, um, as of the middle of this month, we quietly got integrated into Trust Wallet for Android and iOS. Ah. You can download it and you will see our coin in there if you have any in your Ethereum wallet. You can also use that app to create a wallet that will be compatible with the coin. So again, just a fair warning, if you are sending, do not send Ether from an exchange. Do not send Ether from an app which, uh, most apps which allow you to buy the coin are exchange apps. So don't use those apps to send Ether. Send it to a, a wallet that you create with a trust app or if you prefer to use your desktop, go to mycrypto.com to create your wallet there. It will ask you to back up something. Please, please, please back it up. Take it very seriously because if you lose that backup file or in some apps, they'll give you a string of words or a string of letters and numbers, you basically lose access to your coins or whatever you have. Some people say this is complicated. Some people say this is unnecessarily difficult, but it comes back to the core fundamentals of cryptocurrency where it's meant to be all the power in your hands if you that everything is under your control that no bank no company or no website holds the money for you you hold everything yourself Mm -hmm. and you control it 100 percent. so therefore with trust wallet the way that they gave you that backup file them giving you that backup file is them handing you full control they don't keep that file if you try and ask them hey i lost my phone can you recover my wallet they'll say nope that was 100 percent in your control we don't back it up for you because you're in charge of your own money. Mm. And that's the way these systems are designed. So take the backup seriously. That's one. And two is uh, make sure that if you, make sure that you send the Ether from a wallet that you control. No Coinbase, no Bitfinex, no Bittrex, no uh, GDAX or anything. Yeah, like and if people out there who are like me, who have not done this at all, and just wanted to do it for the novelty, uh, yeah, you, you can just... Well, like what Dan said... Um, start the account, start the wallet and whatnot, and be sure to keep your key as a backup. Like, that's really important and whatnot. And go in slow. Like, I'm not 100% sure how to get the Ether. And like mentioned, like that mentioned before, um, you can buy it online, right? 
yeah, there are some sites that sell it, like local Ethereum or uh, in Malaysia, there's New Money. In the Philippines, there's Coins.ph. And in Thailand, there's Satang. Mm. These are local companies that sell the Ether. But again, these companies who sell you Ether, their apps that they give you will have the ability to send Ether to other wallets. But it's important you don't use that app itself where you bought the Ether to send it to the Seaponey Coin uh, ICO because then you'll lose it. You have to send it to a wallet that you control because when you're with these companies, they control whatever you have. Um, the way Seaponey Coin works is only if you have full control of what of your wallet, then you can actually use it, and that's because that's the way that the system's designed. It's meant to meant to be, it's meant to give you full power, so nobody can. In a way, if the, the if you keep that file absolutely secure, and even better, put it in a pen drive and lock it in a safe somewhere, your funds can never get stolen. If that website gets hacked, if Trust Wallet gets hacked, if uh, my Ether wallet, my crypto, co- or any of these sites get hacked. Unless someone can actually break your safe and steal that pen drive, your funds are completely safe. Hmm, all right. So I, I think there's tutorials online, and yeah, YouTube is there for a reason. So there are plenty of tutorials you can find online on this. And I'm really sorry if I've been long-winded about this again. It's just uh, me explaining that C Pony Coin is pretty much real. It's just real. It's meant to be a little. Souvenir token for people yeah. who just want to get something to play with. In fact, if you're willing, if you want to experiment with the Ethereum blockchain and want to muck around with the token, just go ahead. True, 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 true. It is there for um, stuff like I, I'm not 100 percent sure because I don't really do the coins and stuff, so I, I got no uh, point of reference to what to say. But hey, um, I have some C Pony coins now. Thanks, Dan. No problem. So, anywho, um, I, I think we've reached the point where we'll be just repeating ourselves, and I think it's best that we take our leave. So, yeah, and um, thanks for listening, everyone. It's been great to be back on this show again to talk about this. And again, we'll we'll try and be back with another convention soon. If you want to? Yeah, and I, I heard a lot of good things, man. Like a lot of people are excited for it. Mm-hmm. Yep, so am I. <laughs> Alrighty then. Anywho, we'll guys see you next time. See ya. Take care, bye bye.